Hold on, hold on. What's up? What's up? You can hear me? If you're saying something, I can't hear you. All right, hello everybody. This is Tiffany with the private room. And tonight we are continuing our conversation about leading by example. So our King's Table has our normal monthly panelists, Mr. Del Von Harling and Mr. JT Thompson, who are with us again tonight. And then we have two special guests, Mr. Corey Thomas and Mr. Anthony Pedersen. Um, I'm excited to have our Kings tonight because we had a really good conversation, I believe about two months ago, um, about leading by example in the home. And we also talked last month about leading by example with our daughters and the Kings raising daughters. Um, that was a great conversation. We got a lot of good feedback, especially from some of our single moms out there who really enjoyed the conversation and listening to the Kings talk about um, the lessons that they are teaching the young ladies in their home and their daughters and how they are leading by example as fathers. So today we're gonna to be talking about leading by example in the community and all of our kings are able to um, talk on that subject and I'm really, really excited to have them on tonight again. So we are going to start off as we always do with introductions just in case this is your first time. So we're going to start with our um, our regular panelists, Mr. Del Vaughn and Mr. JT Thompson. Uh, Del, tell everybody who you are, what city you're in, and uh, let's get this going. Good evening. Good evening, Kings. My name is Delvon Harling. I'm in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I'm a school educator and I'm also a DJ and I'm just in the community trying to help. I'm also uh, a recent kidney recipient, kidney transplant recipient. So, uh, yeah, I'm just in here, just, just on here trying to help uh, uh, improve the community any way I can. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Um, we, yeah, I'm glad you brought up that about being about a being a recipient. That was definitely that was something definitely something to talk to you about tonight. You about tonight. So we're going ahead and put that out there. Um, JT, please introduce yourself. James JT Thompson, uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina, by way of Charlotte, North Carolina, Big Woo Radio, um, COO, um, radio host, community activist. Um, I gotta call myself author, poet, jack of all trades. Honored to be here tonight with the Kings on the King table and uh, looking forward to the conversation. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So we are gonna introduce our new panelists for tonight. They are our guest panelists. And as you know, when it comes to the private room with Tiffany, I like to bring people back on. So hopefully you will see our guest speakers, uh, our guest panelists tonight in the future as well, but we want to go ahead and give them a warm welcome. So we're going to start off with Mr. Anthony Patterson, who um, came in to fill in. We had a, one of our panelists wasn't able to make it tonight, um, Mr. So, uh, Dwayne Hennett. So I hope that you are feeling better um, and you're watching. So Mr. Anthony, tell us about you. Introduce yourself, young king. What's going on, y'all? Uh, my name is Anthony. Uh, I go, my, my rap name, Amplifier. Uh, I do music, uh, man. I like what y'all y'all giving. I like this energy that's going on. You know, I just want to first say that um, I do music. I, I don't do that. What everybody, you know, everybody do that. Uh, how you say it? Rap music. I call it gospel rap music. I do. Uh, as you said, Tiffany. Uh, I'm a youth minister, also adult minister, and I also, you know, am one of the leaders in the community from being in the trap houses now to being in the churches. Uh, doing uh, working working with famous artists. You know, just uh, you know what I'm saying? Just kind of working, working, working with leaders and also helping others that are lost, you know what I'm saying? Um, helping like lead the way. So, uh, other than with leading with the community, I will also say, I heard him say poet. I would have to say I'm a writer in that area too, a poet, songwriter, and a um, book writer. So it, it's a lot, but just one step at a time. Yes, 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 yes. I From really Orlando, Florida. 
Nice, nice. I was just about to ask you, where are you? You're in Orlando, Florida. I have a couple of friends that are heading there this weekend to take the kids at Disney World. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. everybody want to go to Disney. I know, I know. When we about to come down there and spend all our money too on these kids. <laughs> Yes. People be trying to get the tickets like for the cheap price and stuff like that. They're like, you know anybody can get us a discount there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, 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 yes. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, how how many hours behind are you? Because you're what, an hour or two? Yeah, I'm a, I'm an hour behind y'all. So it's like it's 636 over here. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yes. so thank you, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate that and you taking the time. Um, we're going to bring on our uh, special guest, Mr. Corey Thomas. So, Corey, please introduce yourself. How you fellas doing? Um, Corey Thomas, living in Los Angeles right now. I've uh, been uh, cutting hair for like 23 years in this community over here. I'm actually a Slauson and Crenshaw, um, one of the members of the Wolf Pack. Uh, great group of guys. Can't wait for you guys to meet them. And I love mentoring all the youngsters around here. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I ran across Corey on um, on Instagram and I kept seeing photos of Corey with these good looking gentlemen with these nice, clean shaven beards and looking all swagalicious and all that. Um, they were also putting out a lot of positive energy. Um, just, you could see that there was a brotherhood that was going on in their photos. Um, you know, they were all dapping each other up. They were clean cut, nicely dressed, and it caught my attention, of course, as a woman, but also just seeing all of the positive energy that the Wolf Pack was putting out there. Um, and I think that that's really needed. And so I reached out to him to invite him on to the King's table because I saw what him and the other gentlemen of the Wolf Pack were doing. And I I, I, I wanted that energy here. I wanted y'all to find out who the Wolfpack was. And then I also thought that they would be also be um, a good fit for the King's Table because the King's Table is was created so that men, professional men, um, you know, men that are in the, the community, men that are business owners that are leading and fathers and all that great thing, I mean, all those great things. I wanted to make sure that our men had a platform. And so that was how I uh, came across Corey and reached out to him, you know, made sure that he was interested first off and then wanted to learn a little bit more about the Wolfpack and exactly how they got started and, you know, what his part was in it. So, um, Corey, I'm going to, I'm going to come to you. You're our special guest tonight. And so tell us your story. Like, who are you? Where did you grow up? Um, you know, tell us, tell us a little bit more about you so we can get to know you and who you are as the man before we talk about the book pack. All right. I, uh, I'm originally, I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky. I was actually born in Eminence, Kentucky in a little big town, if I'm not mistaken, but I'm actually from Louisville, Kentucky, and um, grew up there. Um, education. Education is really big. What a lot of people don't know about me is that at a time, I only had a ninth grade education. And um, I was forced to do a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have to at a, at a young age, you know, but I made it work. Um, I ended up coming out on the West Coast from one of my jobs. I ended up liking it. I ended up uh, coming back. And um, I try to teach a lot of kids. Um, I try to tell them not to make mistakes that I didn't make. I went to vocational school, actually. I got a degree in culinary arts. I can weld, I can do carpentry, brick, brick masonry. I can do plumbing. I can do all the basic things I need to do. My grandmother always told me, make sure you learn as much as you can. There is no ceiling. You just keep going. So I've always just kept going. Yeah. Um, I had to teach myself how to cut hair. And like I said, I've been doing it for 23 years, but I was surrounded by a, a bunch of great guys and um, they helped me out a great deal. In turn, I got to see a lot of young kids growing up because as barbers, a lot of times as barbers, we see these kids more than their father see them. So we see them once a week. So I found out is I see them more than their dads. And then I actually get to watch them grow up. I have kids that I've cut now, they're nurses and everything else. And they, they don't, some of them got their own kids. 
and it's kind of weird watching them just grow up and stuff like that. It gives you a good feeling though. And I'm yeah. glad I was a knucklehead because they've always seen me be me. And I've always told them my stories and I've always told them the real thing. I have been to prison. I have had, I have fell down, but I've also gotten myself back up. And I didn't have to get myself back up by being in the streets. I just made it and I made it happen the right way. Right, right. That's good. Um, I know that we've had uh, several guests on our show who do have, um, you know, a justice involved background, um, you know, have grown up in single family homes, gotten in trouble as you so forth and so on. Um, what was your main motivation to say, you know, hey, I need to get myself together and, and, and make a change, do something different? I never wanted to fail. I could not stand for anybody to see me fail. That was one of my big pet peeves. I never wanted to be on the bottom. I never want to be looked at and looked down on. So I've always tried to be the best that I can be at anything that I do. Now, here's the thing. I've only been with the Wolf Pack a year now. And um, when that came up, I, I really, I'm not a social person. And um, talked to Andre and um, man, Mr. Talk, man, that guy, unbelievable Anna, have you talked to Dre yet no I, is that who I spoke to about you being on the show yes that's the CEO okay okay, uh, okay. I spoke to him briefly yes unbelievable that's probably one of the smartest young men I came across in years unbelievable him Craig Stubbs and very awesome guys and I tell you them guys are, I, I think I'm the I'm the one with the shortcomings I'm the one I, I'm, 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 I'm the slacker them guys are really 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 great and um, they welcome me in. I mean, they they wanted me to tell them about myself and everything. And um, I went out, I flew out to them and and we talked and, you know, they presented everything to me. And Dre actually came from the Silver Fox squad. He's a style of guy. So him and Ir okay. Irvin are really, really cool. So right. that's where the Wolfpack came from the Silver Fox squad. So, and um, this guy, man, I'm telling you, that's one man you have to have on. You have to have Dre on. I okay. mean, he multiple businesses in St. In St. Louis. I mean, I ain't seen nobody with that type of drive in a long time. We mentor little kids. He started out mentoring, you know, if you, I don't know if you've seen little buddy on our page. Yes. Yes, I did. I did. He's a cutie. <laughs> started out mentoring him. And, and, and he had, I tell you that little boy, man, is a, that boy is a phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. We got guy, Derek. You're going to love Derek. Derek's another, all the guys are positive. Like I say, I keep, I'm the one that's probably, I'm probably the misfit, but great guy, <laughs> great guy. Nice, nice. So tell us what is the um, the the Wolf Pack because we we're, we're talking about it now. So tell us exactly what is the Wolf Pack and what's the whole mission and purpose about the Wolf Pack. Well, the whole mission is for us to spread positivity, mentor our youth, and be positive role models in each of our communities because we're all from different places. And um, and so far it's been one great ride because they don't have a problem. That's the thing about it. You normally you have a lot of people around who won't tell you the truth, mm -hmm. and they will and they will sit they will sit us down. You know, like if something's not right, they'll sit us down and be like, mm -hmm. "Hey, I need to talk." And they and they really talk to you like brothers. You know, it's crazy because Craig, I'm the old, it's crazy. I'm the oldest, but Craig, I would say about 364 days. But <laughs> he's like a big old he's like a big old brother, but they would sit us down and tell us, do my feelings get hurt? Yes, but we need that as men because as men, we cannot, it's hard for us to accept stuff from other men. Right. And um, I, I love it. I love, I love how everything's presented to me. I love, I love the, the camaraderie and I love that I can call any one of them at any time. And that's anybody that we mentor in our neighborhoods and in our, in our, in our communities and everything. They can call me anytime. I got a couple of guys that I mentor and everything and I always tell them day or night, you call me. If you ever get into anything that you feel like you can't get out of, as long as you're not standing over a body, I can help you. Gotcha. And gotcha. You call gotcha. Me anytime. And a lot of guys, they don't, they don't have that. They don't have, you know, father figures. They don't have strong male role models. They can actually call and that will be there for them. Right. Right. Um, I've, I've heard that a lot. And I have to say, um, as women, we, we have that, but I know that that is, it's different for a man. And maybe this is just me as a woman on the, on the outside looking in, 
to be able to form those brotherhood connections, um, but then also for those connections to be positive connections, and then taking that a step further and coming together as a group to make change. Um, so what are some of the things that the Wolfpack does in the community, um, otherwise the mentoring? What are some other things that you all have done while you've been a part of PAC? Well, while I've been a part of it, majorly, I've always seen everything done through through Dre, through Andre, and um, between his businesses and him helping out his communities, whether it's going back to the old skating rink, whether it's going back and uh, uh, re, 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 uh, rehabbing old houses in the neighborhoods and stuff. He never leaves his neighborhood. Nice. So he doesn't live there, but he still goes back and he owns homes there. And I called him one night and I was like, hey, man, what are you doing? And, you know, and he was up under a house. Oh, wow. Trying to fix it. <laughs> okay. You know, but he, he, but he doesn't have a problem with it. And when we come there, he takes us to those places. And, uh, and I admire that because a lot of people in his position won't even go back and won't even look back and won't even try to associate themselves with that type of uh, element. And he doesn't yeah. have a problem. With it. Right. That's interesting. So um, are you, are y'all doing these houses to be able to have um, what is the purpose of the the re the reverb? Are y'all giving now, it back to the community? Are you you know okay, now, people? What are y'all doing? Yeah, now with the houses that I do, and me and my cousin do back in Kentucky, it's called Red Door Properties. Um, go back to all the old neighborhoods, and my cousin, man, my, that's another. My cousin's phenomenal, man. His name is Anthony Silvers. If you go on Facebook and you look up Red Door Properties, you'll see Anthony Silvers, and you'll see all the work that he does in all the neighborhoods. So all the neighborhoods that we grew up in. He went back and he started buying the houses and he rehabbed them and he puts people back in there. They're able to afford it. And families who, who sometimes families who used to live there, you know, wow. sometimes come back where they were generations that grew up in those homes, you know, mm -hmm. back at home, you know, we had houses with unfinished basements. So, you know, we lived in homes like that and we might have to sleep in the basement and stuff. So now mm -hmm. he finishes them off. He, Cordons off the backyards. He makes it really, really nice, like those houses in the middle class, like those houses way out on her stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he makes it affordable for everybody. So now sitting around with him and we go home and I go to meetings with him. And a lot of times we the only two black guys in there. And he texted me one day while we were sitting at the table. He said, I want you to look around the room. He said, they need us. We don't need them. That's right. real powerful to me. Right. Sure. Right, right. I love that. I love that. I know that that is something that um, has always bothered me is going past these old homes that have been abandoned, forgotten, when there's so many people that are homeless, and there's so many people who need shelter and they need homes. And it just bothers me to my core to go past homes and see them, you know, just falling apart. You know, if you're going to let a, a property go, if you're going to let, you know, walk away from a property, you know, uh, gift it to someone who will appreciate it or give it to an organization that needs shelter or give it or, you know, give it back to a family that, you know, came from the neighborhood that really needs to house, you know, have a home for their for their families and their children. So I applaud y'all for doing that. That's something that I said that I would love to do. And um, I always think my legacy is gonna be a home for uh, for young ladies. And so that is one way I wanna do it. I wanna get an old home and I wanna fix it up and make sure that I'm able to give shelter to um, young ladies and their children. So I really, really like what y'all are doing in the community. Mm -hmm. Another thing that, uh, that my cousin did, actually, he um, everybody in the family, because, you know, everybody's family always has those people who be like, hey, you rent anything? You got anything for me? My cousin, man, like I say, you know, you get you guys got to got to look him up, got to follow him and everything. And he he has a, a vast knowledge of this stuff. But okay. instead of renting to people in our family, he helped everybody buy their own house. And that way, there's no way you're going to ever need help. Right. Everybody. Every cousin, everybody has their own home. I think I was the last one. It's crazy. And I'm the oldest one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, everybody. And now, and, and a lot of the cousins, they all own uh, multiple properties. And, wow. and, and some of them own, you know, uh, eight units. You know, I mean, they everybody's everybody's going really, really well. I'm proud of everybody, actually. I really am. He, he, he's nice. really phenomenal. Like I said, you look up Red Door Properties on there, and he'll talk to you, and he'll tell everybody how to go about it. I mean, he's just a phenomenal guy. 
Nice, nice. Uh, make sure that you drop his link in our chat. I sent you a message. I just realized we're not connected on Facebook. I thought we were. So make sure you send me your link um, so I can uh, tag you in our live um, tonight, uh, Corey. So thank you so much for sharing that. Um, we just had uh, Sean join us. Hi, Sean. How are you? I'm great, man. How everybody doing? Sorry I'm late. I was doing some last minute things, so I apologize about that. I'm no great. Problem. No problem. No need to apologize. You're here. That's all that matters. Um, introduce yourself. Tell people who you are. Uh, my name is Sean Smart, man. I am a father of three. I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, focusing on marketing, helping uh, individuals turn in fashion and profits. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for strange income, but, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, so any, any way that I can, you know, help or, you know, get someone else involved in something, I'll help them see their mental and turn it into, you know, a product or a service or anything from the marketing standpoint, that's what, that's, you know, that's what my passion is about. Nice. I'm sorry, guys. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so Sean, I met him um, doing showcases and um, the Urban City Connect networking um, events, and he came out, jumped right in, started helping me with marketing and promoting, and we've been connected ever since. So thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, we already did some introductions. We were just talking to our special guest, um, Corey Thomas, about his um, role in the Wolfpack, which is how I actually um, was introduced to him on Instagram. And he was sharing about what the Wolfpack does in the community. And part of that is um, Re, uh, revitalizing homes and giving them back to the community, helping um, other families and other men build wealth, um, uh, start businesses, um, doing some mentoring with the youth in the community. I want to jump over to Anthony because I met you um, as a youth minister, and that was a couple years ago. Now you are a young man, and you're continuing to be um, a youth minister, but you're also an adult minister now. Um, you have graduated as a young man. Um, so tell us about you, and tell us what's your story, and how did you get to where you are right now, Anthony? Um. Blessings to everybody. Blessings to everybody. Um, the first thing I could say is, it's well, I just want to say it's an honor to be here to like to be to be able to speak. Um, so many words have been spoken in you know so many of our life. Uh, but let's just believe today that the positive ones is gonna be the ones that win. Um, you know that's that's what I want to say. Uh, love is what caused me to overcome. I actually have a Uh-oh, a little stuck, a little stuck. We're gonna see if he gets unstuck there for a second. We'll give him a second. See, if I know a group called no problem. a that's a wolf pack, they call it something like that. Um, Corey, where's the wolf pack based out of? Well, St. Louis. Out of where, Corey? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. St. Louis out of St. Louis. Okay. All it's right. Not working, no, there you are. You were stuck there for a moment. All that, all the enemy tried to cut me off, but let me just <laughs> finish what I'm going to say. You know, Lord, <laughs> he tried to cut me short. Like <laughs> I've been seeing him try to do it every day of the week, but, um, I, 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 I lost my mama. Uh, that was my queen. Um, and if anybody lose somebody, you gonna have that love for that person you lost for somebody else, rather you know it or not. But I found out through through everything that I have lost to get where I'm at. Not only will you know God replace it, like literally my stepmom is like a millionaire that's friends with Oprah. Like she she go sees Joe Biden and other people like this. I, and I'm encouraging so many of y'all because sometimes we have to lose something or somebody to gain something. So you know sometimes you know. We question our, uh, certain things in life uh, on what we don't have. Uh, like I said, me losing my mama, the oldest out of five brothers, when I lost my mama, I had to let them know I'm responsible for y'all at six and seven years old. Mm -hmm. That led me to go after every young man. So now 
I see I see kids. I have probably a hundred um, photos uh, of me taking pictures with young youth, praying with them. Um, something that many households may need, and it's probably been taken out. As you see, I've got the, you know, I, we was talking about putting prayer back in schools and stuff like that. Um, a lot of legends that made it or that, you know, was young and made it older. I feel like they had a lot of what they needed to continue to pursue, but they're gone right now. And it was something that they was missing. So us, all of us as leaders, my daddy was locked up 17 years in prison, sentenced mm -hmm. 49 years. Seeing mm -hmm. that his, his mentor was Ply's brother Gates. And my daddy still went the way he wanted to. He does unity in the community, but he's still doing something that he can let go. We back at letting go. So what I would encourage all of us, what can we let go to sacrifice more time to come together as one unit, one sound um, with one mind? We ain't all got to think alike, but let's all be on one accord mentally. It's some things that got to be letting go. So if I see one of my brothers or you, Tiff, or somebody, I would encourage how I got here. I let some things go in order to be in somebody's life whether it was to help mentor them, even if it was for a day or a week. So I would say for me to get here right now, somebody that's literally today, I got a call from a celebrity and I'm getting ready to do, you know, some great things. And I definitely want to do it for the one thing I heard James say for the community. If we just, uh, one of the things I want to mention in, in this group is if we're just willing to sacrifice, you know what I'm saying? If it's sacrifice and reading about the law, a lot of these young ones are dying, but what is it that they didn't know that we could have found out that we could have helped them? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I would say if anybody's asking what I'm sacrificing, my son, I haven't seen him in six months. You know, I'm way like here in Memphis. He's in Florida. But mm -hmm. I true, I have faith if I keep working, if I keep, you know, having my faith and keep doing right. Sometimes we kind of, nobody's perfect, but we can't point finger at each other neither. Mm -hmm. So with some things, that it's, it's some things that needs to be uh, reestablished. Let me say that on this earth, uh, Tiff, if I could just mm -hmm. really be real and end it off like that. It's no, some we, things- we need you to be real. <laughs> yeah, it's some, oh, come on. There is a system that's going on where disrespect is respect. What is uh, not normal is becoming normal. Calling a woman out of their name has um, become what I'm seeing. The youth, the very young ones, is going to try to get comfortable with if we don't bring correction. It's not doing it out of this way where I'm hurt. I just want to go and correct everybody that done did me wrong. No, if you do it out of love, you will get a, a, a response back in love. So also knowing how to love. Lil Wayne said it, why we can't say it. <laughs> Lil Wayne said how to love. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I would say this to the woman. Thank you for doing this for the man because we definitely need it no matter what. I don't care what a human being come and say. Man need man empowerment, encouragement. We need the inspiration from each other from the loss of time from the yeah. loss of fathers, from the loss of their kids that some, some I know a lot of people who kids are now dead. Mm. It's, yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I've spoke to them and now I can't spoke, I can't speak to the youth no more. I'm talking to their moms now. It's it's time out for a lot of things that is leading a lot of people to a dead end. If you're gonna tell them to pick up a gun before they pick up a book, that ain't right. <laughs> so it's time for some truth to come and um to its fullness. Don't just tell them one day and think that they're gonna be okay and you might not hear them on the channel nine news. Keep mm -hmm. on encouraging them, consistency. It's going to be needed. So I'm definitely going to always be open. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, a young minister and, and, and dedicate ourselves to it. Well, I like what you're doing. One thing I know you're dedicated. I feel like if anybody is looking to come and be a voice. And when I met you, I was like, hey, I could be a voice now. So thank you for doing that. And we also all we all should be willing to be an opportunity. One thing I could say, and I'm, I'm going to let y'all go. Watching my dad come home after 17 years. Mm. He was speaking even in prison. He was he was always on the radio, 95.3, wherever you put him at. And he was giving his story. If we all be willing to share our story, this world could be a better place. But nobody knows what nobody's going through. So we're operating off the same system. We're, we're loving each other the same way. We're having the same conversation. It's time for something different to sprout out so something different can happen. And it's definitely going to start with love. You know, um, but I would say this last, um, thank you for the opportunity and it's not about us. 
my mama died in front of me. That wasn't about me. That was to help somebody else that's going through in the household with their mom. My daddy not being home until I was 18, incarcerated my whole till I was grown. That wasn't about me. So if we can just, sometimes we got to take us out of the picture in order for the, the bigger picture to make sense. And that's just doing what's right. So that's all I'm going to say. Yes, I like that. I love it. I love it. One thing I was impressed with with you is that I saw that you were in the schools, you know, giving hope to the young children um, and especially talking about prayer. Um, prayer in schools, you know, I, I don't know if I how I feel about that specifically when it comes to my kids, whether I want someone else praying with them. However, I do feel that prayer does have a, uh, a a benefit to it that it has a, a healingness to it um but it also gives people um hope in something bigger than themselves and gives them something or gives them someone to talk to or an entity to talk to um and so one thing i admired about you is the fact that you were going into the schools and you were talking about prayer and you were talking about the importance of having a relationship with with god um or you know for someone else who doesn't maybe believe in god but having uh, having uh faith in a higher power having faith in something that's bigger than you that's more than that's more than you so i really appreciate you bringing up that point about you know sometimes we just need to get out of our own heads and we need to get out of our our own light sometimes sometimes we take ourselves a little bit too seriously um and we don't try to help others or we don't try to share with others. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I definitely wanted to have you on the King's table. We've been trying to get together for a little bit here, Anthony, and tonight, <laughs> the opportunity. And I was like, I'm gonna reach out to this brother and I'm gonna get him on <laughs> Um, tell everybody how old you are. Um, I'm I'm actually 31, but I've started this journey with um praying, like I was like the age of seven. Mm -hmm. Um, I was the age of seven, I was a young boy. Um, and if I could just tell this experience real quick and I can show y'all, y'all will find something in this one little, I lost my game, boy. I know my mama was going to beat the black off me. She would, if I would have switched colors, she would have beat that black, that color off me too. <laughs> I had to go and run. I ain't know where to run. I heard a voice say, go and pray. The moment I finished praying, Tiff, the moment I finished praying, y'all, I opened the door and my brother walked past with my game, boy, even though he got beat so bad. That I don't even, I hope he not ever going to watch this video, but she let the belt go and she hit him because he tried to run. She let it loose. So, you know, let's just say this. Let's not let the enemy loose because we won't go hide somewhere and pray sometime. Um, if I would say this last thing, prayer, I'm glad you mentioned that. Me praying right in Orlando, I have seen so many wars in. I have, I'm the oldest out of five brothers. They all would have been shot and killed or somewhere homeless, but I knew it was the power of prayer because what I'm praying for, I'm seeing them living in it right now. I'm seeing it manifest, whether it's a job, come on, bro. Uh, Delvin, if it was just them selling drugs, I'm seeing nothing has touched them. I haven't got a bad call yet. <laughs> and I right. know that that I know that that is on my life too. And I know that the prayer is powerful because one of my brothers threatened to take me out of here because I asked him to pray with him. Oh, wow. So we, yeah. So we, yeah, we, peace comes when you pray. I'm going to just say that one little thing because a lot of us, we're going through distractions. But I remember praying one time and two people very close to me was getting ready to either go at a shootout or they were getting ready to fist fight. And it would have been a disaster, which is already a lot of wars in Orlando. If we could bring that back, not only would the coronavirus shut down, but a lot of other systems that they trying to bring back to life that need to be dead, they will shut down. So my question, what are we doing to bring peace? And what you're doing right now is definitely going to help. Rather, it's 100 years later, meaning it's something legendary. It might get brought up, but it's not going to die and mm -hmm. continue to do it because it's needed and prayer is needed. Y'all, I'm going to just encourage you. Some of y'all might just say one little thing. God, I need your help. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you have faith in it, you're going to get that help. He say, asking you will receive. So stay encouraged and definitely we all should some type of way. If we speak in positive words, lift each other up. Sometimes okay. a conversation might not do what a prayer can do. I've seen it. I've seen people going through deep depression, deep suicidal moments. Yeah, Sometimes prayer. you got to say a prayer for them. 
prayer has a lot of power. It has a lot of power. Um, JT, I'm going to come on over to you because I know that you're, you are all, well, everybody on here, I'm not just saying just JT, but everyone on here um, is, uh, you know, has a strong faith. And JT, I know that that is something that you um, are constantly, constantly talking about is faith and, you know, leading by example, you know, through when putting God first and so forth. So uh, JT, share your story with us, um, your backstory. Tell us where, where you come from and how you got to where you are uh, today. Well, first and foremost, I appreciate, appreciate everything that the Kings have shared so far um at the table when I talk about when I think about my story I think about you know how God covered my life before I even knew who he was thinking about the grace and the mercy that was put upon my life um when I was innocent and still trying to figure it out um I think about all the things that could have been what they classify as the end but yet God had more purpose placed upon my life and more for me to do when I think about being the age of 14 and, and thinking that my life was done, but God had every other plans for me. Um, and during a nine hour, you know, surgery, not knowing what was gonna happen with my life after that fact, but yet man said one thing, man said year, year and a half, God said, watch this, I'm gonna show up, I'm gonna show out, and I'm gonna put you in position. But coming along with position, I had to be obedient, I had to be patient, I had to understand what those things uh, men, when you think about leading by example, man, it's going to be some of the loneliest times in your life because you're stepping out on faith, not by sight. And you're being the example. You're being the, you're setting the tone for what you want to see in this life. And it's not going to always come the way that we draw it up in our heads. It's not going to always be exactly what um, we want it to be. But the one thing that I've learned in, in in paving the way in my testimony is that it's, it's, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about the greater good of what we can do to blaze the path and bring people closer uh, to the spirit, to God, to what, you know, what we, we're supposed to um, be getting in this life. And, and I, and I, you know, I'm thankful to just seeing another born day, another year around the globe. And I thought to myself, I don't take that for granted. Because there's so many others that 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 fell by the wayside. So many people that have lost life to addiction and things that they couldn't overcome. And 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 it's just, you know, these men sitting here today on, on this king's table could be anywhere else, but they're here in obedience and they serving and they ministering. You talk about power, you're talking about sitting at the table and really having an impact, really inspiring, man, this is it right here. You know what I'm saying? So when we say salute Tiffany, yeah, you, you brought this to, 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 to the mindset and made it a reality. And the kings that sit here at this table, I'm one of a few that's ready to get on those front lines and really be um, an example. Lead by example. Don't be in fear of, of, of man and I, and, I, and I say that you know, a lot of times when you are leading, you are executing something that God has already placed purpose in your spirit. It is not man. It's not about what a man say. They can only give you their opinion. But when God speaks to you directly and you hear his voice, it ain't nothing like it. I'm here to tell you. I'm a witness to it. I can tell you a sinner saved by the, by the grace of God, but in saying that, I've walked paths and I've been through stuff so that my kids and my nieces and my nephews didn't, wouldn't have to go through it. I went through it so they wouldn't have to. So when you think about, when I think about my story and I think about the topic for the night, leading by the example means something totally different when you're willing to go through the fire, when you're willing to go through all the ugliness and all the hate and all the craziness in this world, just so you can say, you know what? Now, here you go. Here's your opportunity to earn your keep, to be obedient, to get it, you know, get it because somebody has set the bar and set the tone and set the example for how it's supposed to be. It's a totally different move. If you see something I do on social media, it's on purpose because it's meant to impact and inspire. It has nothing to do with celebrity or any of that. My celebrity comes when this life is over with because I want to see the kingdom. I want to sit before my God. 
I ain't worried about nothing is here temporary on, on earth and materialistic. <laughs> it can't do nothing for me. I can't take nothing and stuff with me. But what I can tell you is I can lead and, and give an example and have those that's looking for something positive. You got a king right here that's trying to give it to you full circle with no strings attached, only letting you know if you take a little bit of this and you apply it to your atmosphere and you apply exactly what I'm leading by example for and what I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. Don't be afraid to pray. Don't be afraid to talk to God. Don't be afraid to have those conversations. Don't be afraid to claim what you want in this life because a closed mouth cannot get fed. Mm. A closed mouth can only be fed inner thoughts that's not going to go anywhere. Open up, speak out. My guys out here, don't be afraid to not be okay. And don't be afraid to tell somebody. Because the moment you do, now you open up that atmosphere and that avenue to be free. Set yourself free. You ain't got to be in bondage. Freedom reigns the moment that you open your mouth up and you say, I need this. I'm in need. My brother, it's okay to tell another brother you love him because that's what they don't want to see. Strength, unity, and numbers. Mm-hmm. And understanding that we have the power right here in our hands. You control the narrative and pour back nothing but positivity in the atmosphere. Don't be afraid of that. My kings, as you watching this, queens as well, if you watching this, don't be, don't be what handcuffs and what and what they want us to be in the society. We ain't trying to be a statistic. We're trying to run the numbers up and we're trying to let you know that it's the right way to go about it. And it's a way to do it without having to be what, you know, what society claims us to be. We kings and we kings by birth, we kings by nature, we kings kids for a reason. I want you to go out and show in and show up and show out and be who God wants you to be. Keep an open mind, my brothers, and let it be known. All the work starts within. And within. once you're speaking in the atmosphere, remember the power that you have upon your tongue. Yes. That's yes. my piece. Yes, yes, JT. Um, I've always, uh, you know, make sure you have been a friend and we've never even met in person. Like we have been friends for years via Facebook. And even though we have not met in person, I consider you a friend. Um, and I say that because you are always encouraging. You, you always will reach out to check on me and the family. Um, you've prayed with me a couple of times, um, but I've always really, really admired your, your spirit and you always being supportive of other people. You give up yourself freely. Um, and so I'm, I'm always honored when you take the time to be a part of any platform that I reach out to you about. Um, but also because you just, um, you have been an example as, as a father, as a leader in the community, um, you know, as a, as a husband and um, as a friend. And I think that that's something that uh, that is needed more in our community and especially among our men, because we've talked about this so many times before about the power of men, especially minority men, African-American men being active in their community and the difference that it makes um, in our communities when men are out there, you know, hitting the ground helping others, helping our youths, helping our boys. Um, and I just think that it's a powerful thing that you give up so much and a lot and the basis, the basis of your giving starts with, you know, with God and with love. So um, thank you for sharing that. Um, it's always, it's always great to have you. And um, we, we, we need to figure it out. We need to figure it out. I need to meet you. I need to meet your wife. I need to meet your boys. <laughs> oh, so I can give you some hugs and just let you know how much I appreciate you. <laughs> um, Corey, with the Wolfpack, how many of you are in the Wolfpack? It's five, six of us. Six of you. Okay, so I want to ask um, Anthony and I want to ask JT, Delvon's, uh, Sean as well. Um, do you all have, you know, a community of men that you are able to, to you know, talk to and, and build with and do things in the community? Do y'all have that um, as well? And how important is that 
to to you, Corey, to be able to go back to the Wolfpack and talk to them as men, you know, men to men, um, as friends, as business owners. How important is that to you? And then I'm going to put out to the rest of you: Do y'all have that that community um, amongst yourselves of strong men um, that you can talk to and that you can build with? It's, it's actually uh, very important. I had a I had a situation one time, and um, I just felt one of them times like I just felt like I hit the wall. And, uh, and uh, the pack, we all in a group chat. And I got on there one day and I said, is anybody available? Everybody hit me back. And I said, I need somebody. Craig said, give me two seconds. He said, give me a minute. Give me one minute. And he called me back and we sat on the phone and and then we talked, man. And, I'm, and I tell you, to have that outlet and to have that feeling that someone else cares and someone you can talk to. And, and he was there for me. He stopped. I don't know what he was doing, but he stopped what he was doing. You know, and then the rest of the brothers, you know, they hit me up. So are you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to Craig right now. But, you know, to, to have that, um, you can't fathom what that meant to me. Because I was really I was really having a hard time, you know, and we're all in different states. You know, he's way in Ohio, you know, same thing with Greg. Greg stays busy. Greg's a celebrity baker and everything. Yeah, you know, he owns, he owns uh, his own uh, uh, store down there, too, though. You know, you guys got to follow him, too. I mean, I mean, he's just a great guy, but I can call any of them any time I like. And they're there for me at any time. They're there for me. So yeah. it means a great, great, great deal. And also, also, you can't get off the phone unless until we pray. You don't pray. You don't pray every time we get off that phone before we get off. So great group of guys. And That's good. It. That's good. I'm glad you have that. Would anybody else like to share? Do you have that community yourselves of, a, of a, a group of brothers, men that you can talk to when you need to, but also to build together and lead in the community? Well, I definitely have one at, at, at school. Uh, a lot of brothers get together and uh, <laughs> we sit in the office and we talk about everything under the sun. Uh, we and, and And it's not just black dudes i mean it's white dudes too mm -hmm. and we get in there we have candid conversations um over the years um we've had conversations about you know um police brutality you know what's been going on um across this world when it comes to police and black people and i feel like you know my guy dave is like a brother to me because he's a white guy he and he's a policeman and and he he gives me the space and i give him the space to speak his piece also, um, we have a group of um, administrators and 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 um, teachers and, and and staff that come through and 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 when we have things on our mind, we talk about it because we deal with high school kids. <laughs> so, it, so 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 we always say, if you can't laugh at work, you're not enjoying your job. Because there's times when it gets tense, you gotta laugh off some stuff, and we get together and 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 and, and we have some very good conversations, even. Even if it's not about education, it's about about each other's families. How you doing today? Just 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 a, a mental health check because it's a lot dealing with teenagers day in and day out in the high school. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really appreciate those guys, and I'm pretty sure they appreciate me shouting them out on this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they'll see this. But yeah. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We really get down and have and 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 <laughs> just today. We had to remove a snake off campus. So yeah, we had a good time today. <laughs> we, <laughs> was we it had, a literal um, snake or a person's literally. snake? Okay. <laughs> literal snake. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had a good time today. Okay. But, uh, okay. Anytime, anytime we can come together and and if it's a tense moment or it's it's something whatever's going on in the school, and we can all leave smiling and happy and 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 you know, even though today might have been a, a a tense day, but it's a great day. And we can leave like that, we've done all our job. And I'm, nice. I'm thankful for them guys on the block. <laughs> nice. Being an educator is not easy. I was in the school system for about six years. So um, I got burnt out with it, just dealing with, with very disrespectful children. I was teaching uh, middle school, going into high school, and it's just, this became too much. Um, you know, parents not being parents and us teachers trying to fill in the void of parents, which you, you really can't do because a child needs their parent. Um, and so I'm glad that you have that. I know um, there was a big 
a fight at your school last week. Um, and I know that violence in the schools is increasing as well all over the place. So how do y'all come together to address those type of situations? Because we just saw the, the shooting in Texas where, you know, just guy just gets out of his truck and just starts blasting at people. I mean, violence is, is just, it's just crazy right now, and especially in our schools. So how, how do y'all come together to, to, to be there for one another working in a school and then something happens that puts everybody in jeopardy? How do y'all, how do y'all deal with that? No matter what happens, when it happened, wherever it happened, how it happened, you gotta remain positive and calm. There's a lot in, in that situation, in that situation, it was a lot going on. In the meantime, you know, you, you, you remain positive and you 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 have to think about the kids who aren't around all of this all the time. Mm-hmm. You have to think about the ones who have anxiety issues. You have to think about the ones who are um, around violence and they don't like it. Mm-hmm. So you 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 have to you have to care for those kids as well as the ones who are being violent. You got to make sure that they, you know, protect themselves. And I go back to something that um Brother Anthony said a, 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 a moment ago where, you know, prayer in school can work. There are times when we, it may not be a group of them, but, you know, one-on-one, you know, we 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 really, I will say this, throughout the school day, the eight hours that we're with them, that's probably the most positive they were hearing anything. Once they go home, they're going back to, you know, whatever's in their community. So we try to be as positive as possible. For that eight hours, we try to give them as much sunshine, care bears, and, and clear blue skies as possible. Because we know that eventually, even the ones who are being bad, eventually they will hear what we're saying and then they'll come back and they'll actually get themselves together and, re- and realize what we were saying was actually the truth. But at the time, they couldn't really process it because of all of the things that are going on with them at the age of 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Mm-hmm. in those situations you have to remain positive remain calm and always give them a sense of you are love no matter what you are going through no matter where you come from no matter the background no matter the skin color you are loved by everybody on this campus and 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 i tell a bunch of them you may reject our love because our love seems strange to you our love might not be what you think it is because we're telling you we're asking you to do something positive and like and like what anthony said earlier being positive is difficult these days because everything now is so toxic it's so violent it's you know disrespect is the new respect Mm. so we try to still keep them on the positive way even though it may take four years it may take 10 years we might not see them again until they're old and have kids but then one day they'll come and think this is what he meant. And that's what we try to do. We try to keep that positivity going, let them know that they're loved, and also phew, love ourselves and keep ourselves sane. Because burnout is real. Mm-hmm. Burnout yeah. is real. And people don't, I, I don't think people on the outside of these school walls understand what burnout really is. Burnout really is, I'm trying to get this kid to be positive, to be a productive person, to be something that they were born to be instead of what they have to be Mm. so we keep doing that day in day out hour after hour minute after minute second after second you will get burned out because you want this kid to you want this kid to prosper you want this kid to grow and it's a tough road but you know eventually i think um next week is graduation so um that burnout goes away for three (laughs) months it goes away for three months Mm -hmm. it comes right back in august though yeah (laughs) (laughs) yes 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 i um i know that your your school has been um an amazing support for you you brought up earlier that you are um a transplant uh recipient so tell us a little bit about that process for you and how your community came together um to help with that oh man um I think in life, sometimes you'll know how important you are until you go through something that's life changing. And kids are gonna be kids. They 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 tell you anything to get their way. But when I look out in the, in in the social media world and they were sharing my story, they were donating to me. They were they were sending me prayers. You know, these are high school kids. 
surprise me. Oh, hey, <laughs> y'all might like me. I thought y'all didn't like me. But you like me? Okay, all right. Um, that process, yeah, I really had to lean into my 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 spiritual strength, cause um, like I told you before, the body I can take anything. You know, we're gonna experience pain. We're gonna experience we're gonna experience brokenness when it comes to the physical body, but the mental damage is 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 tough because. You just can't go into a store and, you know, say, you know, oh, I want that kidney four from the back. You know, you, you got to you, you got to wait and wait. And, 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 and through that process, you're in dialysis. So your body's taking a beat. But at the end of the day, you and, 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 and for those who are watching this right now, if you're going through the same thing I'm going through, you can always reach out to me and I'll keep you in my prayers and also support you. But in that process, you got to understand and know that there's a light at the end of a tunnel. It's tough. It's grueling. But, you know, shout out to Haley, wherever you are. Um, she didn't know me. I didn't know her. But she saved my life. And that is the best thing that comes out of, you know, uh, uh, a dark tunnel, if you will. Um, staying prayed up knowing that you're going to survive, knowing that God is going to come through for you. Because it's easy now that I'm on this side. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, yeah, it, 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 it's a mental toll on you. So um, just like everyone on this, on this panel right now, God is, there's something for them that they didn't see on the back end, but on the front end, they're thankful for. And it, it, it gave them so much mental strength, physical strength, emotional strength and spiritual strength and that's what gets you through in life is that having all four of those components um i i, I definitely I, I definitely thank the community the kenny community who kept me in prayer and and had nice things to say and i also return the favor myself i make sure i go into the community and i keep them prayed up and i give them the support because without them i wouldn't be here and without god i wouldn't be here yeah yeah, that was a, a difficult time watching you go through that as your friend, you know, as my twins uh, godfather. And honestly, it was very scary for you. Not sure if you were going to make it, you know, to the next year. Um, and I remember the kids saying, you know, is Del, is Del okay? Do, do we need to do something? Can, can you? I know at one point I talked about trying to donate my kidney, but they told me I was too fat at the time, so I couldn't do it. <laughs> Um, so I, I was really, um, thank you for the thought though. Yeah. Yeah. I tried, I tried. Um, and so I'm, I'm so grateful for your, your donor, Ms. Haley, um, because she didn't know you. Um, she saw your story. Um, she, she did what she, what she did and she was able to give you a healthy kidney and now you are, you're thriving and you're still here, um, in our lives and still making an impact. Um, in the community, in your school, especially your kids love you. And that you, I think you really found out how much you were loved during that process um, from your community, from your students um, and the administration with your school. Um, so thank you for sharing that. I think that was really important for you to share, but also for us to know that community can come together and make a difference, but you need someone, sometimes you have to be the person that takes the lead. And that's the reason, that's what we're talking about tonight. Sometimes you have to be the person like you have to be that 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 young man who believes in prayer and goes into school and prays with the kids. You you have to be that strong father figure, that strong husband figure that believes in God and puts God first so that you can lead your family. You know, you have to be that 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 person who believes in in loving other people's children because you know that they might not be getting what they need at home and being able to give that love to a child that's not yours, especially as an educator and being in the school system. Because not always do our, our children appreciate us at the, at the moment when we're trying to help them. Um, but, you know, you've continued to do that. And, um, you know, just being a part of a community, rebuilding houses, like re redoing houses and giving it back to the people that used to live in those houses. I mean, that's outstanding. But, so we have to take the lead. We have to be the ones that have to say, you know, okay, if y'all not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And all of you on here tonight have taken that, that initiative to be able to give back and to be able to, to lead, not just in your homes, but also in your communities, because we need you. We need more people that are willing to do that because times are rough. 
There's so much violence going on. There's so many people that are turning on it. Families are under attack by the devil. And it's just, it's a lot going on. So being able to have someone or some or a group of people that are willing to give her their time, like Anthony said, are willing to give their prayers, are willing to give, you know, their love and their attention um, is, is really a, uh, a magnificent thing to be able to continue to do that in the world that we live in. Um, Sean, tell us about your story. Where, where do you come from and how did you get to where you are now, where you are helping other people build wealth? Um, for me, man, I, I came, I was, I was born in Richmond, Virginia. I spent most of my life uh, between Patterson, New Jersey and North Carolina. So it was kind of one of the things where you got in trouble up in New Jersey, they send you ass down south, you get in trouble down south, they send you back to New Jersey. So um, it was one of those things. And so, um, you know, I, 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 I started my road to entrepreneurship from, from hustling. Um, I started at 12 years old by 15. I was shot five times, uh, been in and out of, of, you know, I've been in and out of, I've been in and out of trouble um, up until I was in my 30s. Um, and so, you know, having that road to you know, um, that life and just the environment, you know, um, growing up seeing stuff when you when you don't have access to the money, the first thing that you see is, you know, I know it's cliche, but it's your environment. Mm -hmm. And so for me, uh, eventually I was able to turn my story around um, and it, you know, it didn't end with that, you know, I was, shot again five times um so it was a lot i was able to take all that trauma um all that you know bad mindset and you know violence first mindset and you know turn it around and um you know i transformed what i was raised to believe and what i what i what i was taught to believe into something different i turned it into a positive i got a tr you know got more attracted to business, got more attracted to, um, you know, corporate lifestyle with, you know, how do I turn what I know into, you know, a passive income or an income? And it could have been anything. It started with just, you know, moving. I started doing moving and cleaning, got into that, um, got into short rentals. Um, but it was the same concept, mm -hmm. you know, the same concept that I learned as a kid. Um, I turned that into a, a passion for entrepreneurship. And then when I learned that I was to meet other people who taught me things, I was able to go back and tell my friends and show them how to do different stuff. And that's how it kind of started. It was like, I'm going to go back. Let me show y'all what I'm learning. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the, you know, the slave that learned how to read, he would come back and teach. And so I know a lot of my people didn't understand that the, the corporate world, they understand business and stuff like that. So it was like, look, it's the same thing. We just have to flaunt, we just have to package it differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when with that, man, I just I just learned love marketing, love strategy, love business. And I said I just I just love really people who are trying. You know, a lot of people we don't know what we don't know. So when I am able to go back and be like, look, let's just, we can do that same thing because a lot of times we think that we can't do what we see do in other communities. Right. You understand? What I'm saying? And so that's just kind of been, you know, passion and how I was able to kind of turn, you know, my life around and looking at stuff uh, or watching other people. I, I watched people drop news about success and, you know, breaking bad habits. Bad habits, I'm still breaking. You know, I'm not no person that's sitting around here that's rich or uh, don't have flaws, but uh, I'm aware now, you know what I mean? Um, you know, just helping and, and speaking. I do speak with a group of men um, every other Wednesday here in Charlotte. Uh, we, we talk and, you know, we're able to release and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, get our, our stuff together. You know, we have rough weeks, we have difficult times, we're able to go and, and release. 
because mm-hmm. you know a lot of times in society come especially coming from what I've come from and probably a lot more of us are on this panel where black men you know we're, we're taught to not show feelings not show emotions you know and things like that and so to be in some of these groups and to learn what I've learned from some you know people in the past here recently I'm able to express you know how I feel I'm able to recognize that you know go see someone and understand that I had PTSD from all the trauma that I went through as a kid and as a young man so um you know that's kind of you know my thing you know for my story about the you know, where I come from and why I'm passionate about business and, and helping people obtain what and it's more about not it's really not about money it's about freedom it's about the freedom that um uh, investing in residual income it gives you you know the freedom to go and network with kids help kids give back to the community because when you don't have it you know you kind of restricted on what you can do and i'm still fighting that journey to get totally free you know mentally i am i'm just trying to get that mindset to catch up with what i want to do financially so Nice, nice. I like that. Um, I've heard a lot um, on the panel tonight about um, mental health and about accountability um, and taking accountability for, you know, your past and what have you learned from it and how you used your past to be able to move forward and to give back to your community. So um, right now, Corey, tell us what it is that, you know, you um, individually or maybe with the Wolfpack are doing um, what is kind of your focus when it comes to a community involvement um, right now? My focus is uh, after the youth that uh, in my immediate neighborhood, I actually live, like, you'd be surprised, but I live right at Slauson and Crenshaw. And um, to see the mindset of some of the young young guys over here as they're growing up and then have to interact with them on a weekly you know, like I said, on a weekly basis, I get to interact with them. So to see the mindset of them and to see someone when they go to schools and stuff, um, got two youngsters going up here to Crenshaw right now. And um, have no male, they, they have, they, they know nothing positive in their life on up until being in the ninth grade right now. So I've actually uh, went up to the school and everything, and I'm actually down on their paperwork and everything. And I'm up there and I talk to the vice principal, the advocates and everything. And them boys, ain't they haven't seen or known nothing but turmoil, abuse, you know, and, and and stuff they shouldn't see. I went up into now. Now they're in ROTC, they're in band, they're flourishing, and all I ask them to do is just never lie to me. I cannot help you if you lie to me. Mm-hmm. Whatever you want to do, I got you. Whatever it is, I'm going to support you. You don't have to worry about nothing. Be a teenager. Just soak up everything you can, but I got you. We also got a lot of other youngsters there that actually cut too, though. And they help me. They keep an eye on me. I mean, they keep an eye on them and everything for me. And um, now I realize that um, I'm in a position to help them because I have kids. And at one point, someone had to be in a position. Someone was in a position to help my kids because I wasn't always there. You know, I, it's a lot of them. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> And I wasn't always there, but it's been it's been people like my boy D right here. You know, he, he you know he, he he's been in school, and I've been, I probably one of my kids that found somebody like him in school who they leaned on and who they who they respected a lot because I wasn't there. So, but I, in, in turn, I've also been on the same end. I've dealt with kids that are not mine, but they might as well be mine. Hell, I'm with them the whole time. I'm 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 molding their minds. I'm trying to help them too. But I'm also learning and going about it the way I have to myself. But now I have a support group that helps me with everything. A great support group that helps me with everything. You know, like I said, with the pack and everything. And then even with my immediate family. Like I said, my cousin Tony is amazing. Amazing. I don't tell him enough, but he's an amazing man, man. I swear I respect him between him and Andre. Real don't know who I respect the most. I mean, because them two guys, man. I can yes. never fail. You can. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, I I love that you are giving back, especially to the youths, because a lot of youths need it. They need someone that cares, that uh, is 
showing them love and support because so many of our children do not have that. Um, I know Dell can speak on that. Um, me being coming out of the school system, I've, I've seen how these kids are just lost. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is because their, their parents aren't present, whether they've been, you know, killed, whether they're, you know, on, on drugs or they're incarcerated. Um, grandma is, is raising them, but grandma can't, can only do but so much, you know, because she's, she's, she's an older woman, um, you know, and I, I am a firm, firm believer in the power of men when it comes to the school system and working with youth. Um, as women, we make a, a, a amazing impact, a beautiful impact. Um, we're nurturing, we're naturally nurturing. And, you know, children, children are, are drawn to, to us ladies, but it's something about a man that goes into the schools or takes someone under their wing or, you know, gives them that, that hard talk to let them know, you know, you don't have to continue on your path that you are, especially when you have that path and you're behind you, you know, yeah. you said that you've been incarcerated before, you know, uh, Sean has shared that he's been incarcerated before. So y'all have examples, y'all have examples of being able to rise above all of that. You know, uh, Anthony spoke earlier about his his brothers, you know, getting into trouble, getting into fights, so forth and so on. One of them threatened his life. Um, he had to pray for him. Um, there's, there's no telling where his brothers would be if he wasn't that, that old brother that loved them and cared, cared for them and prayed for them. Um, no telling where these young men would be that you're working with right now if you wouldn't have stepped in and said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. You know, just don't lie to me. I'm here for you. I got your back. Um, so I really, I really appreciate you sharing that because we need, we need more of that. We, we need more men in the community. We need more men in our schools. Um, we definitely need more men in the neighborhood, you know, that to, to connect with our kids because so many kids need it and so many kids don't have it. And so right. if you're able to give your time, then give your time. <laughs> it's not going to hurt you to give your time. Um, and it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. Kind of tough because being where I am and cutting hair where I cut and everything, a lot of guys, a lot of them come in. They be like, "Hey, see you cut me," and I'm. Then I tell them no, and a lot of them look at me. They be like, "Why?" And I tell them, I said, "Listen to me. The way you present yourself goes a long way in life. Until you come in here and present yourself like you want to do something, like you want to be something in life, I will not cut you. You cannot come in here and sit in this chair with your pants hanging down around your butt." You can't come in here smelling like weed. You can't come in here spitting out the hood news and everything else. You don't even know about your local news or your <laughs> national news. And I said, I will not have you sit in this chair. And then I got parents coming in with their kids. They're trying to keep their kids out of that. But then they come in and you're sitting in my chair. And I'm trying to keep them away from that. Now the kids are thinking I condone that. Good and point. I said, that's why I tell them until you change, when you go in life, be willing for a lot of no's and a lot of doors to be shut because they're going to judge you by the way you come in. You're already going to be judged. So you're going to get a lot of no's. There'll be a lot of doors shut. This is going to be the first one. Then it's up to you. And now you're at the fork in the road, which way you want to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I would see the hood barber. And they, you know, they be like, ah, oh, come on, OG, and stuff <laughs> like that. But listen, listen, listen. You can either call me Quarry, you can call me C. Or you can call me Mr. Thomas, but you gotta break them. You gotta break them out of that. You know, because you can tell they're not comfortable with saying sir. Anytime my daughter brought somebody to me and I meet them and they be like, oh, how you doing, sir? And then I get to talking to them, I'll be like, ah, man, I can tell this guy is not comfortable with that. He's not, that's not what he does. Right. So then I gotta get my daughter up out of the room. I gotta tell him, like, look, man, when you ready to take your mask off, I'm gonna take my mask off. And I guarantee you, you're not going to like what's up under mine. I've seen this, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you can tell when a young man is not comfortable. So if we get him into, get him on the pathway of being comfortable, being able to present themselves, being able to be articulate, being comfortable, walking in a room, knowing that if I walk in this room, I'm going to leave. So if I'm going to an employer, I'm going to leave them thinking they don't have to see nobody else mm -hmm. because you sold yourself. You're confident. If you walk in there and you're not confident and you're tripping over your words, then you got an issue. Mm-hmm.
So mm-hmm. I want them to be positive. If you're dealing with me, I'm going to have them positive. I'm going to make sure they're successful. And that's it. That's my job. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. That made me think of something that uh, JT said maybe two episodes ago. He said that um, when you walk into the room, your race walks in there first. And that really left that that left a lot on my on my mind, you know, as you know, we have a panel right now of, of all black men, not intentional, not intentional. I'm looking for other races to join us. I just haven't found anybody yet. But I, um, when he said that, I thought about my son. I thought about my black son. And even though we light bright, we black. And I thought about my black son. And I, and I thought about, you know, when he walks into a room, I want him to be clean cut. My son doesn't have his, his jeans hanging off his, off his butt. Um, he's very respectful. He knows how to speak to people. You know, he can be silly and he can, he, he can, he still, you know, needs to, to, to grow into a man and still need to learn things. Um, but that really left a lot on my mind when JT said that, that usually when we walk into a room, our, our race is the first thing that people see. And that is so true. And so when you're working with, um, when you're working with these, these young men, they have to understand that. That they, yeah. I'm assuming they are they're they're black men. That they're yeah. when they walk into a room, first of all, they're going to see your color. Then they're going to see your hair all over your head. They're going to see your pants hanging off your butt. Uh, they're going to see you don't you don't have no belt. You're holding up your belt. You're holding up your jeans. Um, you can't have a sensible conversation without a curse word or you know walking in there smelling like a smelling like a bag of weed. So you have you right. have to really present yourself. And so I like that you are letting them know you can't present yourself in my establishment in my chair like this that you have to present yourself in a better way and that's another way to be able to lead because you you're clean cut you're clean shaven you know you look like you you dress nice I didn't check out your pictures you, you know you're you're leading by example in your community and you're teaching these young men to do the same thing because when they walk in the room the first thing they do they're going to see their color whether they're black whether his hispanic you know another minority there that's one of the first thing even a caucasian boy he walks in the room you, they still see your race first a lot of times no matter if, if you're caucasian so um i really appreciate jt um making that comment because it made me think about my son and even though my son is you know a, a neat boy i i always I've thought about that since then of how I'm he needs to keep his his hair cut he has locks keep those locks you know twisted up make sure that you're looking cl- you're clean you know you're not looking like a goofball you're being respectful so forth and so on so yeah I appreciate that I appreciate that somebody what was I'm Sean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are we saying that that is going to prevent You're breaking up a little bit, so I don't think Did I heard you. Hear me? Say it again. I, I kind of came in because my phone's messed up. I, I, I was saying that you guys were saying that kids being clean cut and this, that, and the third presenting themselves cool. I'm mm-hmm. asking you, what does that prevent from people seeing them as, as what? Is that make them feel uh, seem less threatening is what we're telling them? What are we telling them? I believe that no matter what you look like, you know, it's just some people out here that just know from where their circle is that we are whatever we are in that circle. Uh, the main thing these days is education. And right. we are, yeah, I, I, think, I think as black people, we are the most humble people on earth. Like, Too humble. like, like the <laughs> thing, of, like what sets us off is just being a uh, stereotype. If I'm coming in and I'm clean shaven, you know, I'm dressed like you guys on this panel and, and, and I'm in a place to just get some milk and eggs, but you're looking at me like, but, but I'm standing next to you and you clutch your purse. You know, of course that'll set us off because you're stereotyping me. And right. the, thing that, the one thing that I try to get across in these schools, you know, just like what my man said, you know, confidence is everything. If you can walk with your shoulders back and you're and 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 you're walking up straight. I mean, of course, someone is gonna doubt this, that, or the third. But if you clean shaven and 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 and, and you present yourself in a way and you have manners, you know that changes perspective of what they're thinking. 
Now, mm-hmm. will it's they like- still believe what they believe? Probably will. Mm-hmm. Only person that can change that is themselves. Right. But, but what we try to instill in these high school kids is definitely to be confident in yourself. Yeah. Know how to speak when someone speaks to you. Every exactly. Time- if they don't have to be a curse word, you mm-hmm. don't have to sag your pants. You don't. I mean, if you want to, if you want to rock naps, at least have your line up straight. Mm-hmm. You know? Come on, so, come on. <laughs> you know, like it, what they don't understand is, if they are going to be a part of this society, you're going to have to deal with people who want. Well, they're going to invest in you some kind of way when it comes to a job. Right. So you're on someone's job you're representing them and they're investing their time and their resources in you. So mm-hmm. what we're, we're not getting you to be a certain way. We're getting you to be able to conduct yourself in a society where you can be productive. And that's what we, and, and that's what we do each and every day in these schools. And of course you got some right now who's not confident in their abilities because of their upbringing or whatever have you. So that's where the burnout comes in because we want them to be successful. We want them to, whenever they go meet a young lady and that father, you know, meets them for the first time, that father wants to feel good that their daughter is with this guy that's going to not only protect them, but make sure that they're handled well in that presence. Mm. Mm -hmm. you're not being well well, you're gonna be stereotyped but at the same time if you're stereotyped and you just fly off the handle first thing that ain't gonna work you got to be able to communicate right exactly and that comes with confidence communication confidence and priding yourself Mm -hmm. priding your family priding your heritage Mm -hmm. and and just don't assume that everybody's out to get you right right Feel that way. I used to be on. I used to be. On, I stayed on defense. Stayed on defense. But I learned. I had to come out of defense and 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 just. I just had to understand that some people around here are gonna think what they want to think. They're gonna believe what they want to believe. No matter exactly. No matter what you think. No matter what you say. No matter what you got on. They're gonna think and always believe what they believe until you show them otherwise. Yep. You show and them I- otherwise then they'll be able to communicate with you and we'll be able to begin that healing together. But if we just come back and just clashing with each other, nothing gets accomplished. Mm-hmm. It took me a while, but I did, I did, did overcome it. Yeah, for me, with my son, I, I, even with my daughter, I, I don't take away the fact that they're individuals and they have their own style, they have their own things that they like. I don't take that away from them. But I also want them to understand that when you go, I took my daughter to apply for her first job. You go in there, you don't have your shirt, you know, she'll have a little crop top on. No, nope, you need to go ch- you need to change that. You need to look respect- respectful. You need to say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. This is going to be your first job. So there's certain ways that you have to present yourself when you're out in the community or when you're looking for opportunities. That doesn't mean that you change who you are you know, completely, you can still be a fun child. You can still, you know, have your own sense of style and individuality, but certain circumstances and certain positions and certain places that you put yourself, there are certain ways that you you will have to learn to, to adjust sometimes. And that's okay. That's just part of learning and growing and, and being able to be marketable. And you're right, Delvon, when you go into these places looking for a job, they are investing in you. They're looking at you to see if you are going to um, represent their brand. I was told with my job, I, I work for a very political company and my supervisor had to tell me, you know, it's not about you. It's about the company and how you're representing the company. And so our, our children, whether they work for someone else or they start their own business. Even starting your own business, you have to have a professionalism about you. You have to have some business ethics about you because people aren't gonna spend money with you. They're not gonna invest in, in you if you don't know how to speak to people, if you aren't respectful, if you don't know how to be a professional, so forth and so on. So um, all of these things that y'all are talking about, you know, being supportive, um, you know, learning how to present yourself, um, supporting our youth in the community, showing love, um, you know, being able to talk to one another as, as men, I know that that has to be something that all of, all of you need, just like us as women, we need that, that, that uh, sense of, of sisterhood to be able to have people to talk to, because I, it's not like someone said earlier, I think it was JT, 
it's not a, it's not all about us all the time. It's not. <laughs> Sometimes it has to be about someone else. Sometimes you have to put other people first. And that's how you how you become a leader when you invest in other people and you care about other people, <laughs> not just about you. Um, what were you gonna say? Uh, Hello. Go ahead, Sean. I'm sorry. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I I, I agree with um the you know when you start talking about uh being professional, um I would say dressing for success. Um for me though, when I go talk to kids that come from the mud or come from these, you know, uh poverty stricken environments. And I know that they have a mindset because, you know, I tell people I didn't start hustling just because I wanted, you know, I wanted to be cool. I started hustling because I wanted to, I wanted food from this place called Woo Hops. And we ain't had money like that to go get it. And, you know, I just wanted some decent clothes. My mom was doing the best she could. Feel mm -hmm. me? Like, so it was, it was truly out of survival mode. And then it turned into something else. It turned into a, you know, spiraling. You know, spiraling out of control as I went old, got older, but that was the main thing. So when I go into these places and we start talking to kids about dressing for success and things like that, it's like we have to take a lot of stuff into account. You know what I mean? And I heard the mother start talking about, you know, talking with the parents, you know, um, taking account, account, and becoming up. So, um, so. For me, I always try to talk to them about things that they can relate to first to get to. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm a numbers guy, and I know most kids who are in those places, they looking at numbers. You know, so I show them, hey, this is what we can learn, and in a year or so, we can transfer this. And, you know, I show them something that make it make sense to them. You can make this. You know what I mean? Like, when I was Jaded my ex was an exhibition and it took to a whole other world of, 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 of stuff. You know what I mean? Because I always thought an engineer was just these nerdy people that wore glasses and stuff like that. But then I saw one of them, I was like, oh, well, no, they could be dope. So this is another speaking point. But I can go to kids and say, look, you can go do this. And I can eventually show you how to transfer that education to something from your own. Because I'm always speak freedom. I'm always be unsure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's an I don't think nobody can, should be um, the masters and all this stuff and somebody tell me oh, what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so me, me, my approach to kids that are at risk or don't feel in trouble is to first talk, speak to them and, and see what's going on. Uh, but I just try to relate them some type of thing and turn that into a selling piece onto what I uh, um, how to live a better life. Um, okay. And so that that is kind of one of my things. I'm a you know, numbers. These kids are numbers. A mm -hmm. lot of what these kids are doing, they're doing it because of when they stay in it, they, they see the numbers. Yeah, they're caught up with the music, the, the image and stuff. But if you can break it down and make it make sense, and tell them around because one thing I hate is when people who have made it out or have, you know, found religion or whatever the case may be, tell you just to stop. You don't do that. That's wrong. You haven't shown me, you no, know, you haven't gave me an option. An op, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. like, how about just, you know, just stop and then do what? I, I you know, for me, when I stop, well, I looked at my first two checks. It was like two hundred something dollars. I said, "Man, hi, the what? And the, you know how I'm gonna make it? Right. Nobody got, it. you know, time got better. I just sometimes learned some stuff. I, I took what I needed to, and then, you know, turned it to my own. But you know, that's that process. I think when you start talking about these kids, who, you know, parents yeah. hearing that, they hear that, whatever the case may be, you know, show showing me some things that they can right yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense to, to meet them where they are right then with with the with the pants hanging low with the hair not done with this with that and so that they can relate y'all y'all can start building that rapport so that you can help them and help them see how they can get out of it and i'm going to tell you some of the most successful businessmen 
that I know started off on the streets hustling. And I can tell you that if you can be out there hustling for 10 years and you staying out of jail and you're making money and you're doing this, buying the cars, buying the houses, so forth and so on, you, you are a businessman. So turn that business from selling, you know, selling drugs or doing whatever it is that you do into something that's going to uh, build a legacy. And some of the, the, some of the best men that I know that are business owners and doing well for themselves started off on on the streets, but they realized that they were either going to end up in jail or they're going to end up dead. So they took that business, that business mind that they had selling, selling, you know, selling drugs, running women, whatever it is that they did and changed it into a business, started buying business, started opening barbershops, started, you know, doing the mentoring and with the used and build, you know, building recreation centers and so forth because they had that business mind but they 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 started all doing what they did then and they turned that into something else and kids they need to see that they need to see that you don't have to do that for the rest of your life um so i really appreciate y'all spending time with us tonight um we have reached our our time um anthony said to let all of you know to please reach out to him i will send him um i will share his information in the uh the live chat on the on our page, The Private Room with Tiffany. Um, I would love to have you back on, uh, Corey. You know, Sean, you're always welcome to come on when you're able to, Dell, I love you and thank you for continuing to support us. Um, Let's go ahead and and close out. And I just want each of you to share one thing that you feel as men that you can do or you feel is needed. Share one thing that you feel is needed to... to, um, to lead successfully, to lead your community successfully. That has worked for you. And that's going to take us out for the evening. Dell, can you start us off? Um, one thing that I needed was patience. Um, everything won't happen at the snap of a finger. And everything won't happen in five years. It won't happen in 10 years. It, it you know, um, I tell people all the time, maturity comes when it comes. Mm-hmm. Um, just because we grow old or we or just because we grow chronologically doesn't mean that maturity comes the same way mm. so um with uh just 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 patience and and people tell me all the time and you have so much patience working with kids i'm like you gotta have patience with everybody because mm-hmm. we all have a journey and we're all just trying to get through that journey the best way we can in the most positive way we can in the safest way we can in order to feed our families and 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 be prosperous in this world. So yeah, that that's if it's one thing that I can bring to the table is patience. Yes, yes. That's and that's so important, especially for our children. Especially for our children. But that's that's everybody. And I know, I know you've been patient with me when I get on your nerves. And I I'll be messing up over here. You be patient with me too. So <laughs> don't be looking like that, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> so yes patience be patient be patient so that you can help people and you can work with people and you can show them that you're there yes i love it um sean what is one way that you can lead or you would suggest a person can 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 give give out to the community to be able to lead and support others um i would have to say by being consistent keep showing up um, it's a lot of time you know, we start things and we don't finish. Um, we get committed to a cause or a child or whatever. Give up when one thing, you know, one more run, you know, one thing that does go our way or it's just a hard day. I'm just like, oh, the hell with it. I'm going to do something else and try something different. But I just think, you know, being consistent and keep showing up. It's one of the best ways that we can, you know, lead our community or, you know, help someone change their life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I love that. Consistency. Consistency is so important. It really, really is. And that goes along with patience because you need patience in order to be consistent and to to persevere and to reach your goals. So yes, yes, that, that's a good one. That's a very, very, very good one. Corey, you're gonna end us out. What is one thing that you can say that you need or others can put out in the community to help lead the community in, the, in, a, in a positive direction? I guess the one thing for me was as much as I tried to help the kids and much as I tried to help people around me and everything, 
I had to realize that I, I wasn't loving, I didn't love myself. I didn't, I didn't have myself together first. So it took me a while to get myself together and understand my flaws, my wrongs and everything in order to help someone else. Mm -hmm. After I that, it enabled me to help. And like Sean said, be consistent. Just like Dee said, help me to have patience. You know, because I didn't have none of those at first. I was always ready for the immediate. And now I cut, you know, I deal with a lot of autistic kids. I deal with a lot of, you know, bedridden kids and stuff. And you have to have patience. And um, once I learned that about myself, I was able to give back and, and be, be the man that I'm actually trying to become. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all of you shared some uh, some knowledge, knowledge, experience, love, support for your community. But I think it's so important that we always know where people come from because there's always a story. There's always a story for the reason why you are here. There's, there's you know, there's growing up in single parent homes, incarceration, you know, it be, being on the streets, being for the streets, um, you know, health things, mental health, so forth and so on. And there's so many roadblocks in people's lives these days, especially our youths. Our families, I'm telling y'all, are under attack. Our families are under attack. Our children are under attack. And we need people in the community who are willing to give their time and their patience, their love and their support. And I think that it's outstanding that all of you as men are willing to do that. That is so important. And so I applaud each of y'all to continue doing what you are doing because it is needed and know that you are valued, that you are loved and that you are respected, at least right here you are. And I know that you you are feeling that in the community as well, because it's it's apparent from y'all sharing your story. There are people that rock with you that have that are supporting you and vice versa. People are rocking with you. You're able to rock with other people and you're able to support other people and you're able to build other people and still have what you need to thrive and to be mentally, emotionally, spiritually healthy yourselves. Um, so thank y'all so much for sharing. Um, on how to lead by example in the community. And I appreciate all of you for being on the private room with Tiffany tonight to share on the King's Table. Everyone have a good night. <laughs> Everyone have a good night and- Hey ZZ. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> all right, Kings, thank y'all. Have a great night. Night. Good night. Bye. Bye.